Hi, welcome to today's D5 tutorial. In this video we will demonstrate the real-time rendering workflow of 3ds Max to D5 render. To get started, please download D5 Converter for 3ds Max from our official website d5render.com or go to welcome page, workflow in your D5. In this video, we'll be using two demo scenes, one interior one exterior, which can be downloaded for free on D5 forum. You can check the link in the description box below. Okay, let's have a look at the UI of D5 Converter for 3DS Max. You'll see eight buttons on the panel. The first one is Start. Click on it to launch D5 Render. And the selected viewport in Max will be synchronized to D5. When you've added, edited, deleted models, or edited the materials in Max, these changes can be synchronized into D5 by clicking on this Sync button. Next, we can click on the View Switch button to enable or disable live sync of the viewports between Max and D5. Turning it on helps you observe and modify the models from any direction. The cameras in Max can also be synchronized into D5 with one click on the Send Scenes button, and you can adjust depth of field, camera clipping plane and other camera-related parameters later in D5. To sync light objects, you just need to click on Send Lights and the light objects and their positions will sync to D5. Further adjustments of these light sources are also available in D5. From the Settings button, you can check the version number, change global settings, and select your ideal sync method. Exporting D5A files converts 3DS Max files into D5A format, which is readable by D5. It brings the models and materials perfectly into D5. Besides, Exporting SKP files is supported as well, so it can be opened in both SketchUp and D5. Now let's dive into 3ds Max D5 workflow with this streetscape scene. Here's the final result for preview. First thing first, check your models. Looking at the scene, there appear to be multiple types of materials, including Vire standard multi or sub-object materials. Don't worry all of them can be mapped into D5. Click on start to sync the main building to D5. Click on view switch, and you'll see the viewport movement in D5 is consistent with the one in Max, so it should be really convenient to view and modify the model. After confirming all the models and materials have been synchronized correctly, turn off auto exposure in D5. Then you can start adjusting the materials based on what you have in mind. Click on Send Scenes. Then you'll find all of them synced into D5. Even for models with a large number of lights, D5 Converter and D5 Render can handle them with ease, as well as keeping their hierarchy. For duplicated light instances in Max, they will be synced into D5 as light groups, very convenient for group editing. Next, let's look at the scene and fill it with appropriate assets. To export models and materials from Max, it would be better to click on Export D5A, because D5A format makes it easier to edit the model or reuse it in other projects later. What's more, in D5 you can sync the original coordinates of the model by clicking on Sync Coordinates. Or you can click on the models, then use Align feature to keep their relative positions consistent. Take a look and make sure everything's okay. For models you want to use in other projects, just add it to your local library. For materials in this scene like glasses, you can adjust them, if necessary. After that, turn off Max, and save the D5 scene file. It's time for more adjustments in D5. Press L to hide light source icons. Turn off auto exposure. Adjust the general atmosphere. Then go to lighting parameters for specific adjustments, according to your scene. In the demo scene, we're using HDI with certain adjustments in the weather system, 
You can also use Geo and Sky. Adjusting parameters in the effect panel, including LUT, exposure and especially bloom, which adds a halo effect to the emissive materials near the camera, can help you simulate a city scene when it's getting dark. Duplicated light instances in Max can be adjusted as a whole in D5. Please note that materials above lights and surrounding glasses will influence lighting effects. If the lighting from Max is not enough in the scene, you can add light sources in D5 as supplemental lighting. We recommend rectangular lights to light up a large space and point lights for a particular area. Then take a look at the overall result. You might need to adjust the color temperature of glass and lights for a harmonious atmosphere. And then adjust the materials according to the lighting you have. Emissive materials can be used together with spotlights. Remember to adjust the cone angle of spotlights, place them evenly, and avoid adding too many lights to a single scene. To manage the light sources in D5, you can use box selection and control with click to quickly select the lights you need and group them by pressing Ctrl, G, for easier editing. Next up, let's import some assets from Max to fill the exterior space. Of course you can always stick with D5's built-in asset library that is constantly updated. Choose what you need from an extensive range of D5 assets, Add them to the scene, and then adjust them as you like. For example, you can turn on emissive for the material of the streetlights in the scene, and add a spotlight here to work with it. To further enrich the scene, you can choose some exterior assets for commercial scenes, and decals from D5 Asset Library. D5 Asset Library makes it much more convenient to place and adjust models in your scene. Another convenience is its dynamic models, such as the bird's swarm particle used in the demo scene. Flying direction, quantity, velocity and other parameters are adjustable. Moving on to plants. In this scene, we're using the brush tool to add conifers so that the building and the surrounding environment won't be obscured. You can test on a small scale to see if you get the right effect, and then apply it on a larger scale. For places near the camera, you can add dynamic trees for better result. When you're done, you can add some lights to enhance the sense of depth of this space. When it comes to character models, it would be better to have more people in the distance, and less of them near the camera. Another tip is to take into consideration the season and ornaments you have when selecting characters. Same with plants. I tend to use static figures far away and dynamic ones nearby. You can turn off the real-time option when you are placing dynamic figures. You should avoid characters gathering in the same spot and try to place them evenly. Also pay attention to whether they fit into the environment. The final step is animation making. After setting the shot, adjust the easy ease and camera transition duration back to the first shot. Observe the characters and add a keyframe. Remember to turn on rate matching. Go to the last shot. Add another keyframe and click on the play button. 
Now we've created a walking character. Be careful of where they're going because you don't want people to run into each other. Copy the clip to duplicate the character's movement. Update camera shots after they're adjusted. And you have a new clip. Select the channels and adjust export parameters. And you are all set to render. You can also add the clips to render queue for batch rendering. That completes our tutorial for the real-time workflow of D5 and 3DS Max. Feel free to download the two demo scenes in this tutorial in Scene Express and D5 Forum. To download the latest version of D5 Converter 3DS Max. And explore the brand new Max to D5 workflow. You can go to d5render.com, then download. Or open your D5 and find it in Welcome page, Workflow. Please give it a try. And you are welcome to post your Max D5 renderings on social media.